Good morning, everybody. My name is Hans-Peter Pfister. I'm the faculty director of the Institute for Applied Computational Sciences at the School for Engineering and Applied Sciences. And uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to today's symposium. Um, this is one of the highlights of our year, actually, because we, we like running Compute Fest, and that includes the symposium. Uh, normally, we run academic programs. We have a flourishing master's degree in computational science and engineering, and we're involved in the Harvard Data Science Initiative. So we're very active in education here at Harvard. But we also have a seminar series that has weekly seminars throughout the year. And I invite you to sign up to our mailing list to be informed about those. And we run a couple of international programs, one in Milan and one in Chile, that are very successful for our students. But really, the highlight of our programmatic year is uh, Compute Fest, which is happening in the last week and this week. And last week, we had a series of workshops with uh, over 1,000 attendees on all things computational and computational science. But today is really sort of the capstone of Compute Fest and really one of the highlights. And uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to hand over the microphone to David Parks, who will tell you a little bit more about today's program. Let me just uh, acknowledge a couple of the ICS staff who have been instrumental in putting this together. That would be Kathy, Sheila, and Natasha. And you can see them throughout the day. And please uh, give them a hug. And uh, let's give them a warm round of applause. But uh, David Parks, who is uh, also professor in computer science and the area dean of computer science, will now introduce the program. Um, he and Neil Shepard and Pavlos Protopapas and who am I forgetting? Brian. Oh, and Brian Hayes, of course, have put together this fabulous program. So uh, please give a warm welcome to David Parks. Well, thank you, Hans. Uh, it's really wonderful to see you all here, here this morning. Um, you know, as I look around the room, I can't help but think that, uh, it, that this is the day when computer science is making economics great again. <laughs> um, I promise we won't make many references like that during the day. Um, as Hans said, I'm David Parks. I'm the area dean in the computer science area within the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Um, I'm also secretly an economist, and so this has been a great pleasure to organize this event today. Um, I thought I would start by making a few remarks that will set the scene. So back in the 1960s, when researchers at MIT we're using the world's first commercial user interactive computer for the very important task of designing and playing video games. Um, over at Harvard, Ivan, uh, Ivan Sutherland, um, a pioneer in human computer interaction, was using the PDP-1 for important science. And as part of his science, which he was running in the Jefferson Lab, which is not that far from here, he uh, wanted to get the most use he could out of this computer, and he ran a market to control access on the computer. So the way people bid to gain access was by using colored felt-tip pens and drawing on a piece of paper that was kind of this wide and this high to mark their bids. And they would bid against each other during the day, and then the winning bids would control access to the computer to run their experiments. Um, Ivan Sutherland wrote a paper about this in 1968 called A Futures Market in Computer Time. And uh, you know he remarks in that paper that the market seemed to be working. He says, the, uh, under the auction system, computer utilization is very high. If idle, the price automatically becomes attractively low. Users are generally glad to have a choice between short periods of expensive prime time and long periods of time at less desirable periods. 
But I think as, as you read those comments from 1968, it's interesting to reflect on some of the economic systems and some of the computational economies that we'll be hearing about over the day to day. Maybe echoes of Uber here, for example. Another pioneer early in the fields of computer science and also economics was the mathematician John von Neumann, um, who not only in 1928 introduced the first conception of, of what we would think today of as an equilibrium for a game, so for zero-sum games, that became his 1944 book on economic, on, on, on games and economic behavior with Oscar Morgenstern. But he also, in 1945, introduced what became known, known as the von Neumann architecture. So this is an early pioneer who was thinking at the same time about economic questions and computational questions. Okay, so then flash forwards now to the 1980s, the early 1990s, and we begin to see computer scientists envisioning what we think of now as the computational economy. Jeff Rosenshine, um, a Harvard alumnus from 1979, applied mathematics. And there's another connection I will point out later in the morning was writing about how AIs and how computers could be used for automated bargaining, for trading and negotiation. And he says something which really echoes true even now. He says, as computers play an increasingly important role, it will be necessary to consider ways in which these machines can be made to interact effectively. He continues, they'll pay programmers to develop sophisticated models of their opponent's strategies Ultimately, this sort of effort drains resources that might be better spent elsewhere. So he's anticipating this, what we'll see later today, arguably, this kind of arms race of algorithms trying to outwit other algorithms. Um, and you know, one place we saw this early on in the trajectory of how computer science and economics have come together was for sponsored search where the early auctions that were designed for allocating advertising online were not well designed and led to these bidding dynamics where bidding robots would compete against each other. And you saw these price dynamics that you'd rather not see. A lot of effort was spent trying to manipulate the design of the markets at the time. Okay, so why are we all here today? Um, happily, we're here for reasons that are broader than advertising. Um, we're here to think about the roles of, of data, of dollars, and algorithms as they interrelate with the computational economy. From the data perspective, we're interested to think about how computer science and statistics are coming together for understanding economic systems, and in particular for leveraging the new kinds of often individualized, more contextual data that we now have available that was not available until fairly recently. We'll be, we'll be hearing about how computer science innovation has led to something completely new, how it's led to a digital currency that the field has been wanting to design and have work effectively for many, many years. And recently, some smart people, some of them anonymous as, as until now, uh, have found a way to get that to work. And then thirdly, we'll be talking about the role of algorithms, the role of computer science within economic systems. Um, and we'll also hear about things that market designers are doing to try to respond to the negative outcomes that can occur if these algorithms in these market systems, um, in a sense, get out of control. And we'll hear more about that. I also wanted to comment that today we're going to be hearing about more than just markets involving money. We're also going to be hearing about markets and computer science and algorithms in settings where there is no money. We're going to be hearing about very challenging, very societally important algorithm design questions that relate to, for example, how to clear markets for organ, organ donation. 
as is a setting where using money would be inappropriate and illegal. But there are still very challenging, important questions as to how to clear those markets. So we're here today to talk about uh, the computational economy and whether you are interested in the financial industry, whether you're interested to understand how data and web services and computing are changing the financial industry or um, this idea of an economist as an engineer responding to new algorithmic, algorithmic um, components and, and forces in the financial markets, or whether you're here because you are interested in digital currency, in what's happening with Bitcoin and blockchains, or whether you're here because you are interested in the way big data is coming together with econometrics, um, for example, using search engine, engine terms to understand how people are thinking around the country. Another reference, sorry. Um, or whether you are here because you're fascinated to learn more about the way algorithmic markets are realizing the invisible hand of Adam Smith in the context of these new labor markets, um, I wanted to welcome you. 